Okay, well, welcome to the screencast for question four, 2016, paper one. Uh, again, I've assumed that you have attempted these this question in advance. So let's look at what we've been asked of here. Okay, now you notice the notes that there will be uh, stuff here in different text boxes. Hopefully, it'll be an exp explanation of what's going on. The basic I'm saying here is that function notation can be very weird. Now, normally, we are looking at function notation written like this. So f now of of x. Okay, I usually write the x down lower than maybe it might be in, in text, just to show that the, the x is just part of the f. So the f of x is sometimes written like uh, this. Okay, um, with the colons. Okay, and x. That's fine. So really that. But ultimately, you can always just consider that to be just y. Okay. So what's this thing asked? So it's a, it's a function here. Now it's not quadratic. It's cubic. I know that because it has a power of three. Okay, uh, as its biggest power. Uh, cubic equation would have three factors. Okay, so you'd have whatever x plus maybe two, x minus one, x minus three. You're just making that up. Three factors when multiplied together give you the the cubic function. Okay, now what are they actually asking us here? So in part A, find the coordinates. Now that's the coordinates means an x and a y. Okay, so a point on the x y graph at which the graph of f, so the actual graph itself, the curve, cuts the y axis. Now in coordinate geometry, there's always an overriding principle. I'm going to try represent it here very very quickly. That's your y axis. That's your x axis. And this is often the key to solving a problem. But when something now, this equation could look something like this. Okay, I'm just going, to, just going to make that up, okay? It crosses the x-axis at three points. Okay, so when the equation is put equal to zero, remember, at the x-axis, y equals zero, all the way along the x-axis. So the coordinates there would be, now it looks like it's a negative number, a negative x number, zero, the other two, just by the way I've drawn the graph, positive x, zero, positive x, zero. Uh, you'll notice that it has two points here, a max point and a minimum point. Okay. And what they're asking us for here is, where does this curve cut the y-axis? So that point there, which will be uh, zero and some y value we have yet to find. Okay. So the basic thing I'm trying to get across here is that, in an xy graph, along the x-axis, the value of y is always zero. Along the y-axis, the value of x is always zero. So this was stuck in, okay, uh, goes to the answer. And I'll just put in an infographic here, just showing you kind of what I said. Now this is uh, a polynomial, okay, it's actually a quartic polynomial, so it's got a power of four. Not something you'll be examined on, it's too complicated, but just showing the progression, uh, Power of four has four factors. We'll have a maximum and two minimums. Okay, or to basically it'll have turning points is more the correct way of saying that. Now the actual answer, so I've written out my cubic equation. I've replaced the function notation with y just to make it more familiar. You're perfectly allowed to do that. And I stated at the x-axis, or at the y-axis, the value of x is zero. So if that's true, which it is, then the x value all the way through will be zero. So I've replaced the x value in the cubic equation with zero. That cancels, cancels, cancels. You're left with y equals seven. So the point is zero on the x, seven on the y. Now I've actually drawn that cubic equation using a function grapher, and you'll see there that that's, uh, that's correct. Okay, now you won't have that luxury, but no harm having it represented for you that way. All right, that's part A. So really the, all you had to do was cop that at the y-axis, x is zero. Put zero in for x in the equation. Answer achieved, okay? Now you have to verify now in part B, it says using algebra, so not a graph, that the point uh, A, which is one seven, is on the graph of F. So basically the equation you were given is one seven on that curve. Now this is pretty simple in one sense, maybe the first thing you do is go, well, what can I do? Okay, if you are stuck, you're given a point. F was given to you. Now we had a y equals x cubed, whatever. Okay, I'm not even going to bother do it out here because I have the answer on the next page. Dot, 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 dot. If seven 
equals one put into the equation. If that ends up being true, left hand side equals right hand side, then that statement was true. Let's go ahead and do it. So I have my original equation. I put my seven in for y, put my one in place of the x's, put to the calculator, no point to it by hand, put to the calculator, I end up with getting seven equals seven. Okay, so the right hand side uh, or left side equals right hand side, therefore the point is on graph. Okay, so this is even easy once you know what to, what to do. And in one sense, what else can you do? Okay, so giving it a go will often just achieve the answer. So that's B. Part C here has two parts. Okay, so first thing now I'm looking at, they're using a different function notation, the more, I suppose, the more classic version of it. And this looks a bit different because they have this apostrophe here. What that means is the same thing, f apostrophe x is the same thing as dy dx, which if that maybe gives you a hint, uh, that's to do with differentiation. Okay, they give you a hint of the word derivative. So you have your function, okay, you differentiate it, you get your f of x function, f of x function. And then you're asked to find the slope of the tangent when x is 1. So the, again, uh, so we've only on 2016, but as we go through more screencasts and practice, uh, I'll be very clear about this. Slope is important, okay, and in differentiation, it gives you a process for finding the slope of a curved uh, graph. If you have a linear equation, you can find the slope multiple ways, okay, but if you have a curved equation, like a quadratic, a cubic, a quartic, anything not straight, then you need a process. That process is called differentiation. Now, the opposite of that is called integration, but that's something that you don't actually have to study at leave a certain pass level. So go to the answer here for part one. So I have my original equation. Okay, that's the one I got from part A, or the, or the overriding equation for this question. I'm calling it y, because that's, I'm more familiar with it, okay. I'm now finding dy dx, okay, which is the equivalent of f apostrophe x, just using different notation. So I've taken my first term, and I'm working left to right, and the rules for differentiation are you multiply the power by number in front, so three times the number in front, which is one. Three times one is three. That's where I get that from. And you reduce the power by one. So three take away one is two. So that's my first term differentiated. Move on to the second term, same thing, two times the number in front. So two times one is two. That's where you get that. Take two, uh, so you take one from the power. So two take away one is one. So that's what's there. Now you don't bother writing the one when there's no, you don't need to. The next term, now this is a slight variation and we sh this I suppose is gonna be, make this video a bit longer trying to explain all this. But when you differentiate minus two X, okay, you're applying the same rule. Now do it over here. It's minus two X to the power of one. So the rule applies, power by number front, one by minus two is minus two. Now if I take one away from the power, one take away one is gonna give me an answer of zero. One of the rules of powers, four or five, whatever it is, states that anything to the power of zero is one. So that's why this x to the power of zero changes into one, because they are the same thing. You can test on the calculator by putting any number in to the power of zero, it'll always display one as the answer. Final step then, minus two by one is just minus two. So when I differentiate uh, x term to the power of one, it always disappears and you're left with the number associated with it. So if it was minus four x differentiated, my answer would be minus four. Now in this case, it's minus two x differentiated, so you end up with minus two is my answer. And lastly, I'm differentiating the seven. When you differentiate a constant, with basically any number, it always turns to zero, okay? Now the reason is, if I do it over here, if I graph the line y equals seven, now I appreciate that my graph is slanted, or whatever, so that's y equals seven. The slope is, when you differentiate that, what's the slope of a flat line, okay, a horizontal line? The slope by definition is zero, okay? So what I've done now is I've found my differentiated equation, okay? That's fine, I'm halfway there. I now have to do the second part, which is this, find the slope when x is equal to one. Now dy dx is just mathematical notation for slope. So really what your equation you've just found is set telling you the slope is equal to this uh, collection of terms. If I put one in instead of x all the way throughout, I'll end up finding that the right hand side will convert into a number, and that number will be the slope. So I've done that beneath, put one in, put it to the calculator, out comes three is the answer, so the slope is equal to three. Okay, so that's part C, part one. 
Now, part C part 2 says, hence find the equation of the tangent to the graph of f at the point uh, 1, 7. Okay, so usually when you talk about a tangent, well, not usually, it's a straight line. Okay, so with a straight line, you need to know the slope and one point on that line. Now, we know the slope. Okay, slope is, um, what was it there again? Was it 3? Okay, um, the slope is 3 and the point is 1, 7. Okay, so I've done it here, and I've explained what I've talked about just here. I've got my equation of the line formula I've got from the maths tables. I have my slope and my point. Now you can call the, the point x1, y1. Okay, I only have one point involved in this question. Put it through the equation, so instead of y1, I put 7. Instead of x1, I put 1. And instead of m, I put 3. Now, sometimes that will get you the full marks, okay? But generally, they like the answer expressed in, one, in, 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 in a fashion. Everything on one side, the x term being positive. So to achieve that here, I'm going to remove the brackets. y minus 7 doesn't change, but on the right-hand side, 3 times x is 3x. 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. Then bring both the y and the minus 7 across to the right-hand side, leaving the x term positive. So if they both moved across to equal, they're leaving nothing behind. The plus y becomes minus y going across the equal. Now the minus 7 becomes plus 7 going across the equal, but now it's minus 3 plus 7, which gives you plus 4. Okay, and that's now expressed in the form ax plus by plus c um, equals a 0. Okay, so that's part 2. Now, just to finish off, and we have for the different parts of the question, again, a screen printed from the marking scheme itself. You saw part A was a 5B scale. So there's three jumps, 0, 2, 5. Part 2, or part B was 5B as well. Part C was 10D. Now, it's the first time we've came across 10D in these screencasts. D is a 5 scale. So 0, 2, 4, 6, uh, 10. And lastly, then, the part C, part 2 was a B scale again. So that's the 25 marks. Don't really need to know, but I put it in just because in 2016, they, they have the, the model answer um which is a very abbreviated answer and just then the different reasons why we give credit or not credit okay so that's question four uh, again um, look back at that a few days time and it'll make some sense you have some differentiation um and that's a process that will be asked in a variety of questions and it's one that you should be able to know so if you at least can get the first part differentiated you can achieve some marks okay i hope that helps and um, thank you very much.